Hey, Aaron Rabinowitz here. When you're working with a scene like this in Cinema 4D, your first inclination might be to use a dome light with an HDRI image for your background, but you might want to rethink that. Let me show you why. So here I am in Cinema 4D, and let me just get rid of the dome light. We're going to start from scratch here. I'm going to add in a dome light, and then I'm going to go into my browser, which by the way, you can access by clicking on this right here. And I'm going to grab this HDRI called Almost Clear, and I'm going to drag it right onto the texture for the light. And we're going to see that in the background. And this looks good, you know, as it is, except here's what happens. Now, rotation will work great. But the minute we start panning the camera or zooming in, the illusion falls apart because the background doesn't move. And in the real world, there would be some amount of parallax. So let me show you what I do when I'm working with scenes like this or maybe a space scene with a star field background. Let's get rid of our dome light right here. And I'm going to add in a sphere. Then I'm going to set the radius to something like 5,000. You may need to set that higher for a larger scene. Okay, so now I've got this sphere kind of hanging out in the background, and I need to give it a material. So let me create a new material, and I'm going to apply it to the sphere. And then I'm going to double-click on the material, and get in there, and I'm going to add in this HDRI, and I'm going to drag this right here over the material, and I'm going to choose Base Properties Emission Color. And that means I'll be using this image as an emission map, which will light up our sphere with this texture. So with the material selected, I'm going to go into the settings over here. I'm going to drop the weight for the color down to zero so that it's black. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the reflection. And then I'm going to scroll down all the way to where we get to emission. And I'm going to set the emission weight to one. Now I've got this material casting light. And if I Rotate, of course, we can see that it's working. And I can also pan, and there's just a little bit of parallax, right? Zooming in, just a little bit. So all in all, this is pretty cool. Like, it gives us you know, a really nice, believable look for the sky. And of course, if we want to change the direction of the sky, we can grab hold of it and just go into the coordinates, and I'll just rotate on the Y, and there we go. It's worth noting that right now Cinema 4D is still using its default lighting, which is fine for setting things up, but it's not great for a render. And the reason it's using its default lighting is because we haven't actually added a light to the scene. We're using this sphere as a light, but it's not really a light. So Cinema 4D assumes we need light in here. So what I suggest you do is maybe try this. Click on here and choose Dome Light. And what you'll see is that instantly the light changes. Now we're really truly using this sphere as the source of light. And if I turn this dome light off, then we can see that the default lights are adding additional illumination. So I'm going to turn that back on and we can even set this light to an intensity of zero. It wouldn't make a difference because the light is actually being blocked by this sphere. So that's one way to give ourselves better environmental lighting. Now, in doing this, we've kind of created a problem that we're going to need to solve. So let me show you. Normally, if I wanted to add in some atmosphere, I'd go to Redshift, Objects, RS Environment. And usually when you add it to a scene, everything goes super white because there's this fog in this environment. But we're not seeing it here. And we're not seeing it because our sphere is blocking it. So if I were to turn this off and I were going to show you my dome light, which is contributing to the environment, that is just hugely bright. And what I'll do is I'll go back to the Redshift environment. I'm going to lower scattering down quite a bit, um, bring up attenuation, and go down into the uh, ray contribution scales for the camera and really bring that down. And you can see what we've got is this foggy environment. We've got our, our mountain, our little island thing here, our water, and this background, which is white. But we don't have our sky. So now we've got the environment. So how do we solve this problem? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, first of all, just get rid of the Redshift environment, and I'm not going to need this dome light. I'm going to turn the sphere back on, and I don't need this texture, so I'm going to delete that. And we're just going to have this sphere. And I'll add in an area light. So go down here to area light. And in the area light settings, I'll scroll down to where it says area shape. And instead of rectangle, I'm going to choose mesh. 
and then I'll take my sphere and I'm going to drop that into the mesh. So now it's using the sphere as the source of light, but we can't see it. And the reason is because we need to turn on bidirectional. Right now it's lighting up the outside of the sphere. If we turn this on, we're lighting up the inside, and we also want to make it visible so that we can see the sky. Now the problem is we have this white background, but we don't have our texture on there. So what I'll do is I'll grab hold of the same spherical texture that we've been using, and I'm going to drop it right here by texture. And we're not really seeing it right now because it's so bright, we have to bring things down a little bit. Let me come back up here and I'm going to set the intensity down to 1. And now it looks like our regular sky. So now let's try it again. We'll choose Redshift Objects RS Environment. And that's going to blow things out. And we can just go in and make some changes here. We can lower the amount of camera ray contribution. Um, we can lower the amount of scattering. And we can start to see our, our sky and our background, bring up attenuation. And we get a, a bit of an atmosphere, and we can even brighten up that atmosphere, give it that blue tint that you'll sometimes see by going over to emission. And I'll change the color to like a pale blue. And there's other settings you can play with as well. But the point is that now when I uh, move the camera, I can see the sky moving with it. If I zoom in, it moves with it and we get this nice atmosphere along with everything else. As always, I hope that this helps you in your work. Once again, I'm Aaron Rabinowitz. Thanks for watching.